So I'm putting in two packages of active dry yeast. Okay, so I'm using this one, and it's for higher elevations, and it's also for higher loaves with um, using gluten-free. So this is a really good one to, to use. Hudson Mill. Okay, so I'll just keep that packed. Okay. Now from here, yeah. three-fourths of a cup hot water. And with that, you want to make sure that it's warm to, warm to your wrist, but not so hot you can't put your arm in it because then the yeast will die out. Okay, so three-fourths cup water. Warm water. That there. We're going to put in two tablespoons of, well, a little over two tablespoons <laughs> of agave syrup. And then we're going to add a tablespoon of sea salt. One tablespoon. Uh huh. And pour that in. And then we're going to let that talk to itself for a few minutes. Okay. Now, while that's talking, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to put. I'm going to put two cups. Yeah, two cups of soy creamer. Got that? Yeah. Heat it up okay. in the microwave. Okay. Okay. For two minutes? Yeah, for two minutes we'll do it. You want it warm because the cold will stop the yeast from rising, mm. but you don't want it hot because the hot will kill the yeast. Mm. So you always kind of want it a little bit warmer than room temperature, to your wrist warm. Mm. Kind of like baby bath water. Okay, now I'm going to put the egg in. And hand that off to my beautiful assistant. Okay. You need it. Okay. We're gonna let this. And the reason why I put the egg in is because gluten-free bread and um, uh, and and is really dry. And if you put the egg into it, it helps bind it together. And we're gonna put another binding agent into it, and that's going to be potato flour. That's what that. Mm. Okay. We're going to do a third a cup, third of a cup of potato flour. Mm -hmm. You have to be really careful when you put the potato flour in yeah. because it can become lumpy mashed potatoes really fast. Mm. Keep going. How's it feel? Is it warm? It feels warm. Excellent. Okay. If you want to go ahead and bring it on over here. And you can slowly start pouring it in. The important part of making bread is always to the liquids first before you start adding the flour. I um, actually bake a potato in the microwave and throw it in my blend tech and throw it in, but potato flour works just as well. Okay, you can go a little bit more now. Beautiful! Awesome! Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Now we're going to let this sit for a few minutes and let the yeast start to bubble up and sing. So we'll put that on hold. What are you looking for with this? It, it will bubble up. There'll be bubbles all along it, mm -hmm. which means that the yeast is, is really active and happy. Mm -hmm. See how our yeast is? See how happy that is? Mm -hmm. Nothing better than singing yeast. All right, we're going to add this flour mix to it, okay? And then, 
this is where the fun begins. We're going to add a cup of this. Organic sprouted whole grain spelt flour. How much is that? That's a cup. How much of the other stuff was it? It's the whole bag? It was the whole bag. Here it is. Oh, this bag, yeah. It comes out to probably about two cups worth of flour, I would think, of their types of flour. 19 ounces. What you usually do is that you mix in the first three to four cups when you're making bread to make sure that you have all of your yeast evenly through the, out your dough and no dry spots. Okay, so from here, we're going to add some oat flour. And that's gonna be about a half a cup of oat flour. And can we have a um, half a cup of rice flour? Mm -hmm. Recently ground. Awesome. We're going to add in a half a cup of my flour. My flour? My flour. Your and that's the one flour. that I mix in flax, chia, sesame seeds, and almond. Flax, chia, sesame seed, and almond. Mm -hmm. oh. And then if you want to go ahead and pour that in. And don't go too far with the rice flour. We're going to need more. But right now we're just going to mix these together. This is the whole fun of bread now, is you get to get all your stress out by kneading the dough. <laughs> is that the same chia that they make pets out of? Yeah! Oh dear. <laughs> I'll never look at a chia pet the same. Yeah, but if you should notice, you know, hair coming in a little green and thick, <laughs> you'll be good. Okay, more rice flour. Another um, half a cup. Okay, we're ready for you. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to note here the style and finesse of a lefty using her right hand yeah. to knead bread. <laughs> the reason why I like to use oat flour is it gives it more flavor. The recipe that I saw used tapioca flour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tapioca flour is, is a, a good, um, it's a binding agent. That's what we use potato flour for instead. They use potato flour too. It has potato flour, tapioca flour. Yeah. But I don't think it had oat flour. Yeah. And then we're going to add... How much did you put? Like uh, a fourth uh, of a cup? Fourth of a cup because then we're going to add a half a cup of quinoa. Quinoa flour. Yeah. And that just yeah. adds texture, adds flavor. Like I say, you want to add the different grains because if you stick to all one kind, it gets really crumbly. The gluten's what holds it together. And without gluten, bread just bites you. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that gluten bread is so bad for you anymore because of the way that they have manipulated the grain, your body can't produce, process it. I'm just going through and mixing some flours just so I can keep kneading. It doesn't, that's part of making bread is you can't be exact on it because when you're kneading you don't know how much you're going to need. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. I can take that one. I got it. How are what, the what are you rice looking for when you're kneading? Okay. What you're looking for is, is that it's not going to have sticky spots. See, this is still sticky. Mm -hmm. It's going to be smooth, and it's not going to be... Um, doesn't stick to the pan, nor does it crumble. And the more you knead it, the more air you get in it, and hopefully the higher it'll rise. When I was living on the North Slope in Alaska, we made our own bread all the time, and then we would go out to Thetis Island, which is on the Arctic Ocean, and build a campfire, and eat the bread with whatever berries and whatever other type of wildlife stuff we could find out there. You'd cook the bread on the campfire? Yeah. Wow. Well, we had our choice of a campfire or a barrel stove in the house, and the campfire was easier. I've seen people put uh, bread dough on a stick and cook it like that. Yeah. And is part that what, of... Is that what you did? Um, well, we, we, we took 
cast iron with us. Oh, okay. um, our job was to count fowl. We um, raised eider ducks and whistler spawns um, on the north slope at a bird refuge. Okay. See how it smooths out? Mm. That's your bread. Now the next thing we do is I have to empty out the excess flour and then I take some oil. Now I'm using flax oil but you can use whatever else. What you do is you cover it And then from there, if you have a dish towel, we cover it in a dish towel and let it sit. Just cover it over here like this? Uh-huh, just cover it over. And then we're just going to let it sit and rise. Tell you where we got this. How long does it rise? An hour. An hour. And there's your bread. Wow. Now, the cracks is because it's gluten free and it doesn't have the gluten to bind it together, so it's okay that it has the cracks. Alright. Now, with gluten flour, you usually punch it down and roll it. But well, because glu um, gluten free has a hard time re rising on a second time, I don't manipulate it as much. your bread. And now we're just going to do the same song again. Just cover them. Okay. And let those sit. Um, I'm going to let it rise probably about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And then stick it in the oven. And it's going to be a little bit moister than you normally would have because it dries out so fast. And so, but there's your bread. Cool. That looks good. It's beautiful. It's My applause is in the chewing.